So hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the One Point Safety Show with myself, Scott Hartley, and my glorious co-host, Scouse Andy. Apologies for the gremlins uh, when we got started here, but a few technical issues, um, sharing screens, etc., StreamYard, doing the funny business. And also, can I apologise to everybody who may have wanted to tune into YouTube? Yesterday, StreamYard had some downtime and linked about 16 links to this week's episode. So um, I can only apologise for that. Um, it wasn't me. It was the algorithm. So apologies. It wasn't me, it wasn't me exactly. How are you, Scouse? <laughs> you all right, mate? Yeah, I'm all right, pal. Yeah, I'm all right. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. It's uh, horrible, miserable and raining and wet. But apart from that, it's good because I get to talk ball with you. So, uh, yeah, more than happy. Um, well, I suppose we'll get started with a bit of uh, a bit of sponsor news. We are um, sponsoring uh, Dunstable Town FC Talk of the Town podcast this week. Um, and we're also sponsored by Manscaped.com. So Manscaped.com, um, you can go across to Manscaped and use their lawnmower 5.0 for any uh, shaving that you'd like to do or any grooming for male grooming. Um, you can also use our... Uh, our code at checkout, which is OPSS, and that will give you 20% off and free shipping. Um, so, yeah, if you want to check them out, the link is also in the description of this video. Um, we'll get on to our news then, mate, really. A uh, bit of news going on. Um, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and JJ McCarthy are all planned for top 30 visits in the final week um, before the draft. I think that actually it might be next week. Um, thoughts on this scouse at all? Are they just deep diving? I mean, I'm not sure what's going on there. I say it's all it's all blowing smoke still, still lion season. So it th these things don't bother me. I mean, whatever tactic they want to pull out, it's fair enough because there's nothing there's nothing we can control about it. it just is what it is, you know. So if 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 May's gonna be coming in last for a visit or whoever, 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 who cares? Um, I just hope that, you know, we just picked the right one. <laughs> That's all it's about, man. Yeah, agreed. I mean, uh, Deluxe, who's in the chat at the moment. Hello, good evening. Good afternoon to you, mate. He's uh, actually put a question to us on this. He said, are the late visits with Daniels and May designed to keep everyone in the dark as long as possible? Uh, leaks don't seem to have come from the inside. And do you think that the team will tell any of the prospects that they intend to draft them? I don't think they will, but all options remain on the table. As always, everything should be open. No, we, yeah, we, should be open for, we should be open for business as long as it's, it, you know, it, it's a good enough trade to even make us look at it. And yeah, that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, no live demos, by the way, on uh, Manscaped, Scott. Absolutely not. That's not going to work <laughs> on this show. Uh, <laughs> that's not something you want to see, definitely. But, um, yeah, I agree, Deluxe. I think that they are just trying to... Um, just trying to keep the cards cl cards close to the chest as they should do, and um, everyone's still in play at two. I don't think there's any issues at all. I mean, let's be honest; they'll be taking in draft stock as well, so they might be looking at this and thinking, "Could we actually get a haul? You know, is there ways that we can trade down a little bit and still get what we want? You know, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe, um, you know, maybe they want to take a Drake May or a Jaden Daniels and they can trade with New England. Maybe New England moves up. Who knows? Um, we'll get into that probably a little bit more. But yeah, I, I agree. I think they're all there. I don't think they'll tell anybody that they're going to draft them. I think that might be a bit bit silly and to say, oh yeah, we're going to draft you. But I think the prospects will know there's genuine interest in there. I think when you come for a top 30 visits, uh, anybody who comes for a top 30 visit, there's got to be genuine interest there. But we discussed this last week, um, Scouse, and you were saying the same thing. It's It doesn't necessarily mean that just because you're here for a top 30 visit that they actually do want you. There's obviously genuine interest, but they might be looking to think to themselves, is this the guy? And if not, it might put them off. You know what I mean? It might be might confirm the negative rather than the positive. I mean, what are your thoughts on that one, Scouse? Yeah, I mean, you know, these things... Are there to impress, but also, you know, you can also, you know, really, you could even sabotage yourself. Really, I mean, you know, if you're not, if you're not uh, at your A game throughout that day, or whether how long they've got you for, because and say those thirty visits, you can have them for a full like twenty four hours if you want. It. You know, so it's so it's a long, it's a long time that you've got to be like on your not just your best behavior, but kind of, you know, mentally tuned into everything that's going on around there, and and sometimes players don't want to play for certain teams. So, so see what you got to think about there is is. You know, for example, I'm not saying he is by any means, but say, for example, 
there's been loads of rumours that um, Daniels wants to play for the Pats. Now, mm -hmm. so what's he going to do when he comes to an interview to us? He's going to he's going to play it down. He's going to be you know maybe not quite at the races, maybe not do so well at the interview. Now again, it's all pure speculation. We've got no idea what's going on, but. Some players might try and play the game like that a little bit, especially if you've got a team that you know that they've got a great chance of getting you if you just mess up one interview or one day or you know, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it could happen that way. So, very true. And I think that's why a lot of the quarterbacks this year opted out of the testing. You know, we've seen what happened to CJ Shroud um, last year. He didn't test very well in the come of which exact exact test it was but basically one of the tests he didn't test out very well and every, everyone was like oh we're going to move him down we're going to move him down to this um down out of our draft board and the texans obviously took him and look at how he played last year guys are obviously a gamer so you know these sort of things do happen you're right yeah, you're was, absolutely well, right wasn't it an aptitude test or something some sort I think of aptitude so. test yeah, yeah the bad so. yeah the bad time with um but the skill set and the and the play and and the size and and, and everything mm. about him he was my number one QB by an absolute mile. Forget Bryce Young. He was by far the best QB. Um, you know, Panthers the old knock really on the, the old knock Panthers on the really uh, Ohio. They did the knock on the Ohio State quarterback. I mean, come on now. You know yeah, I mean? I see, again, what do we always say? You never scout. Never you never draft the helmet. You never scout the helmet. Correct. So, but obviously, a lot of times, you know, Ohio State QBs have, have failed in the NFL. But again, most schools have had QBs that fail. Many of them exactly. So Rod, 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 Rod spot on with what he's saying here. 30 day visits are about the person and how they answer the questions and scenarios put to them. Absolutely. It's about getting the person in the building, Rod, and making sure that when they're in the building, that you've got the time to sit there, you know, with the and go through what you want them to go through. It, it doesn't even need to be football related. It could be a dinner, a chat, um, obviously. To, the, to that extreme, it could be we want to privately work you out. It could also be we want you around the whiteboard. We want you to take like down, write out some plays, show design concepts. How do you lead men? What's the what's the focus like? I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, we're all QB'd out pretty much. And, you know, I get that. And, and draft fatigue is definitely setting in within the fan base. You can see that. I mean, we're even getting to the stage now where if you go on Twitter and you like one quarterback and you don't like another quarterback, it's racist. I mean, what the, <laughs> what the buggery is going on? Honestly, it is getting ridiculous. Let's just all calm down a bit and chill out and just realize mm. that this is, this is probably the most important decision that this franchise has had to make um, for many, many a year, but we've been here before. We just have to trust the process. And if Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury, all of them get their guy and they're all on board and in this aligned vision as they spoke about all season and all off season, then we've got to trust that. We've got to trust that process is going to happen, whoever they pick. I know you will not be happy if it's JJ at two, but, you know, uh, there's ways and means, isn't there? I mean, if we trade out and we trade down a bit, you might be a little bit more... Uh, you might be a little bit more on there. Yeah, I, 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 I just, I mean, I say, I think it's a little bit different. I think in the UK compared to, you know, the Americans, you know, with the racist type stuff, because, you know, I don't care. I don't care what. I genuinely, genuinely don't care if the black, white, Chinese, whatever. It doesn't matter for me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What color enough, I don't are, care yeah. who they are. Exactly you know I mean? right. Yeah. Exactly um, right. You know, you know and, speaking as two and, white boys on a podcast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah of but, course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. But, I mean, I get it. I, I mean, I do get it from certain people, but again, it's race should never be coming into this because it's not it about racism. Be. It's about the you're scouting the player, you scout, you're scouting you the are. traits, the skill sets. We don't know the person. We don't know the person. Yeah, everyone might be very polite on on a camera and all those types of things, but you need to get them when the guards down. Do you know what I mean? And this is where these visits come in, especially when you got them for long periods of time. The, the, the guard will drop, and then that's when you really see the real person, the real player, you know, the real guy. Absolutely. Um, so I think, uh, you know, we'll have to see if there's any character concerns. And there's been nothing mentioned in the in, in the in YouTube world or any world really at this moment about okay. any of these guys saying that the bad attitudes or the bad guys or not. There's been nothing like that. So nothing. I think all. I think you can't go too far wrong with any of them, really. Do you, do you think though as well that do you think though as well going off your point there? Do you think that it's because we're so fatigued about the quarterback and it's been like this for so long that we're now in this process where nothing is coming out of Ashburn, and I mean 
nothing. They don't, we, we, no one has a clue. All this smoke they're doing this, they're taking Drake May, they're taking Jaden Daniels. They're, I don't think, I don't think interest. anything's come out. Of no I don't knows. think anything, no I don't think anything knows. has. And the only thing that has been out there has been a little bit about JJ going up the boards. And you know, we love him, mm-hmm. JJ. I think that's smoke as well. I really do. Oh, that might make JJ might, might go higher than he should, and, and someone's going to reach for him. And that means that another good player is going to drop to us at, at, at 36 or whatever it is. See what I mean? So you're playing games, you're playing, you're playing chess and checkers with this one. Um, and you've got to be you got to be three steps ahead of the game. It's exactly what chess is all about. So and I, think what Peters, uh, I think what Peters is about that. Hi, Simon. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, he says, imagine the Twitter reaction if we don't go QB at two. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you might as well turn the app off at that stage. You might as well just say, that's <laughs> it, we're done. Uh, but but that's their decision, and we have to go with what they think is there. I mean, Rod's got on the back of that, and he said, don't be surprised if AP and DQ pull a surprise and take Phoenix and try to get a left tackle. Um, you know, mm-hmm. maybe. The thing, I mean, is though, the thing is, though, Rod, there with that one, is that if you're going to go Phoenix, you don't need a left tackle. You need a right you need tackle. A, you, need, yeah. you need a right tackle mm-hmm. at elite level because he's a left-hander. It's always protecting the blind side, Rod. So, so just bear that in mind if you're thinking about those type things. Absolutely. Well, I suppose we'll get on to it then. I mean, Scott G, um, shout out to Scott G, who was in the chat early, and I'm sure he's, he's still with us. Uh, he suggested last week that on social media that we should do our own mock draft. Um, for those who are listening to the pod, I will talk you through it, but I apologise. It's that pod of the year where we get close <laughs> to the draft and everyone goes, I'm not listening to this because you're talking about mock drafts. And, we, uh, wouldn't be, and to... we wouldn't be doing mock drafts. We wouldn't be doing it if we weren't, people didn't ask for them. You know, we're, correct, we're, not, correct. we're not huge mock draft guys, really. In <laughs> are we not? Well, are we not? well, you are. I suppose you are. You always send them one every bloody day in our chat. I know, I know, I know, I am there. I, am <laughs> I don't, there, but yeah. I don't, but, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, there's a couple on here. So I've done one. Uh, it's just basically without trades and one with mm-hmm. trades. Let's um, do you with trades first and find with out trades. Okay, let's what, see. what you were able to do, mate. Do you want to? Do you want to present yeah. yours first? I'm, I'm going to get that on the on the thing here, mate. Cool. There we, we go. Can make that a little bigger, yeah. mate, or is that a problem? I think that's about as big okay. as we can go, mate. But so... yeah. Okay. So go first on, one. So for number two. Six foot four beast, Drake May is going to be our number two, our number two, our number two, our number one quarterback at pick number two. Um, mm-hmm. Then I've gone with our two second rounders. I've gone for tackles. Um, Patrick Paul, which is obviously the brother of Big Paul, we've got now. Can't remember his first name now at the moment for our guy. Um, Chris Paul. <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris Paul, Paul. Yeah, so he's Chris Paul's brother, and he's meant to be like twice the player. So, um, and he's a tackle. Um, and then also we've, we've mentioned this guy before, Kieran Amagaji, yeah, Amagaji, Amagaji, yeah. So again, and this guy's a top draw guy from Yale. Um, last season was injured, tore his quad out for, out for uh, most of the season. I think he played the first four games. And Scouts, um, can I stop you? Can I stop you there for that? I'd like to apologise to you as well on here because you did mention this last league week, and I kind of almost shut you down. I was like, no, 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 that's not right. We look back at it, and sure enough, you were absolutely spot on. So, <laughs> my hat, I take my hat off, and I apologise to you for that. No, no worries, man. No worries. Yeah, I mean, I think um, when you're looking at these these tackles, I mean, at 36 and 40, you you are running a little bit lax, as in like you're looking. All the elite guys have gone, but these yeah. two are still really good tackles. Do you know what I mean? I think these guys could be could be bookends for you. Yeah, um, I truly I truly believe that with the right coaching. Um, I think Scott mentions here, Kieran at 40. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you might think it might be a, a slight reach, but I don't think it is because if this guy wasn't injured, this guy will be in the will be guaranteed first the first round draft pick. Guaranteed. Um, okay, he's come back from his quad injury. What's he like after that? We don't know. But I think at 40, he's he's he's, he's well in mocks that I've tried. This guy has gone before our 67th pick every single time. So I had to go there and just maybe a slight, a touch, maybe a touch of a reach, but not by a lot. Yeah, um, I think most mock, most mocks have got him around tackle six, haven't they? Tackle six or seven. Yeah, and I think the, I think a lot a lot of main guys went like first 24, 25 yeah. in, in the rock I did. Um, then obviously there's this one of my favourite guys, so obviously position of need. Again, another one, tight end, Ben Sinnott, or Sinnott, whatever you want to call him. 
He reminds me like Chris Cooley. That's who he reminds me of. Same mm -hmm. kind of stature, same kind of you know catch radius, those type things. Um, and Chris Cooley and was again, decent I, for us, man. So yeah, he was. And again, I've happy. seen people say I've seen people say that he is he is tight end two on people's boards. I've had been tight end three on other boards. He's moving up 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 draft boards as we speak. So uh, yeah, interesting that one. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Interesting, isn't it? Um, Deuce. Deuce, no cornerback on my one. Yeah, no corners. Not for, not for, um, not for me. Not for not me. For Scouts. But then in saying that, I think this. I mean, I mean, I will go to Cole Bishop at one hundred in the sec. But um, I think he can play a little bit of corner as well. He plays a bit. He plays a free safety mostly, and then he can play a little bit of corner. Now again, he's not going to be cornerback one or anything like that. But he could be. He could be a body in a filling spot at times. Um, going back to the the seventy eighth. Jeremiah Trotter, linebacker. Now, again, everyone, there's been a lot of rave about this guy. I mean, I, I like the dude. I really do. Um, obviously, our main guys are, are gone. Now. Like, is it White, is it? The main guy, the guy who was ridiculous in the, in the, yeah. in the, uh, the draft, in the, yeah. in the combine, sorry. Um, yeah, one of them, really, for me. It's kind of, he's a, he's, he's this guy's a good enough linebacker. And learning from the boys we've got there now, this guy would be ready to step in and start, not this year, but the year after. Um, I think he'd be perfect, kind of the next one, next man up. Um, and then basically we've got mentioned Bishop, Edge again. Th these guys are a little bit more kind of, you know, on the outside looking in these three at the end here. But mm -hmm. I do think the first six though definitely going to be contributors. I really do. I really think Cole Bishop could be one. Um, then you've got Stephen Solomon, Edge, Troy. Now again. He He's he's got some nice burst, but again, he's he's not he's not going to get your double digit sacks. He's not going to be one of those guys. Um, probably more special teams. Same with Marshall Lloyd as well. D decent running back, got decent speed, not not blistering, but decent speed. And he, he I've got him down as pegged in for potentially kick returner. Um, and then the last guy I just did because it's the, f the f funniest name ever, Bob Means. Sorry, I had to just go for that. <laughs> Fair enough. But like, <laughs> like, like the other guy who's like the other guy who's in college now, Cavossier Smoke. I mean, yeah. some, of, some of the some of the names are ridiculous. yeah, man. Some of these names, man, are just so funny, funny, yeah, man. I mean, so I had to go for I had to go for Bob Means at the end there. But it's funny, yeah, it's, it's funny there. What Deuce has popped in the chat? He's basically said Sinat is going to need a year or two to fully develop. But as soon as you watch his take, Cooley pops up. Exactly mm -hmm. what you just said, Scouse, with that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that's a very good draft. I mean, we'll look at it. Is that that's, that's I take it that's your one without trades then? Yeah, yeah, um, that's the let, one without trades. Yeah. Let me let me um let me let me pull up um pull up mine then and we'll yeah. and I want the I want the boys in the one. chat. I want the boys in the chat to rate who who's was better out of both. Okay. Well we'll yeah. see. So it's putting me against you in these ones. And uh, to answer you, uh, Rod. Um, so Forbes going to improve. I really do. I really do believe he, he can be cornerback one. I really do think he could be that. If we've got we've got the the all elite coaching staff. If if these guys can't get it out of him, nobody will. So we'll find out by the end of this uh, by the end of this season if he's any good or not, for sure. Right. Um, but I so believe he, he will be a lot better. So here's mine. This is one with this is the one without trades. I went Drake May at two as well. Um, and then for whatever surprise me, you're normally a Daniels guy. You, you, I know, I know. I've, last got, week. I've got, I've got, I've got Daniels as well. I'm, I, as I said to you, I'm 60 40 Daniels May. I don't mind either way, but I thought I'd mix it up a bit and I went Drake May. Uh, Kingsley Suamataya at 36, he dropped to me from BYU. That's your left tackle of the future. Um, this he's got enormous, uh, enormous length on his arms. Uh, very good at, 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 in uh, pass protection. Not so great in run, um, but that you can learn that. You know what I mean? You can learn that over time. But uh, exactly what you want, really. Pass protector, that is that is what you want at 36. I was able to double, I double dip like you did as well, Scouts. I've got Jordan Morgan um, from Arizona, offensive tackle. Normally, in most mocks, he's hanging around at about 36. There, they're about to take him there. Somehow, he, he got down to 40. So I thought, hold on a minute. You've got 
a guaranteed right tackle starter and a guaranteed left tackle starter, and you could actually let them fight out between them as to who takes what position where, then you don't have to think about Andrew Wiley. Then your swing tackle is Cornelius Lucas. So that is two end, bookends there that you fixed in one in the first two, two, uh, first two picks, which was a massive high need for me. I looked at the board at 67, um, and I thought to myself, who are we going to get at 67? Not sure what's going to happen here. So I went with Kamari Lassiter, corner out of Georgia, um, who is on most people's boards, uh, most people's board, the, you know, the, he's in the top four or five corners um, that are on the draft. So uh, again, lengthy, long corner, six foot one, um, six foot <laughs> one. And he's yeah, six foot one. Very, very good um, at, at coverage, uh, especially at man coverage as well. So he might take a bit of time to learn, but a very good player there. I went with edge at 78, Marshawn Nealon, um, edge out of uh, Western Michigan. Um, he's rated again in the top eight to 10 edges out of this draft class. Uh, the only knock on him is he gets a little bit he can get a bit. He can get a bit stumped at, at the time of the scrimmage, so he's almost got a little bit of a stutter step before he gets started. So you need that trained out of him. But he's lengthy. He's got a good bend, um, and he can play on either either side of either edge. You can go left or right edge, whichever you want to do. And um, Jutavion Sanders, I've had him in for a top thirty visit. Um, looking at this, you know what I mean. It's it, it, he's came in um, for a top thirty visit. There's clearly interest there from Muzz. Again, probably. Tight end three are off the board, maybe tight end four. I don't know whichever way you want to you want to play that. Yeah, Kate, Kate Stover as well. Yeah, yeah Kate Stover's on there as board, well. So he's playing the list, but yeah, there, there's a lot there. But I think there's genuine interest there. Then as you got, you get further down. Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver out of Rice, um, bigger guy, um, high RAS score. That's why I picked him. I, I like nine, Luke McCaffrey. I like Luke McCaffrey. Um, he's nine, also the brother. It's also the brother of the star. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, so. and, it, and he was quicker as well at the 40, only just. But uh, yeah, he, he looks very, very good. This one I've got as a real big sleeper. Um, you know, this next pick at 152, which is uh, Kitan Ola, Olapojo out of Oregon State. He's a safety. Um, he is a bit of a box safety, um, but he was a leader on the, 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 um, the Beavers over there. Uh, he was a walk-on, complete zero-star recruit, absolutely nothing to him whatsoever. Um, turns into a team captain last season, uh, highest tackles in uh, Oregon State history. Um, you know, from a, from a safety position, um, he does like to play right down in the box. So that's kind of your cam curl replacement um, there that I've got kind of late on in the draft. And then this one, Eric Watts, right at the end, um, out of UConn, he's another edge piece. No idea whether he even would make the roster at, at the last pick, but ideally it's someone that you could either have in a rotation or you think, well, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how he goes and train him up for the future. So that yeah, was, I mean, uh, that was fair, mine without trades. I mean, it's quite it's quite a nice draft. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know much about Lasseter. That's the only thing. If, if he's as good as what, you know, obviously play for Georgia, good, always a good defence, et cetera, et cetera. But it's kind of... How good is this guy? And, and that's the only thing that I, I don't know much, too much about Lasseter, to be honest. He might be excellent, but I, don't, I haven't watched him a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, in general, assume, assume a tire that you've got. I mean, I, I'd, I'd pick him yeah. over probably any of my two tackles I picked, but he, was, he wasn't there for me. He wasn't there. He was, he was taking the first round. It's, so, um, and it's so tough. It's, it's not really draw, realistic, you know. is it? It's luck of the draw. Of course it is. Of course it is. Oh, yeah. Do you want to see your draft, mate? Just okay, mate, again, yeah, mate. I'll, I'll pull it back up again. Yeah, no problem. Um, bear with me, and I'll get that back up. Share yeah, Scott, yeah, Scotty, I know, I mean, I know you're on about two second round tackles, but the thing is, you, you need you really need to hit on both tackles that we've got because we're just weak at tackle in a big way. So that's the only reason I wouldn't normally double up on one position in the same in the same in round normally, but we are desperate, man, for decent tackles. There you go, uh, Deuce. I hope that's all right for you. Um, so I picked Drake May, one, Kingsley Suda Mataya um, at 36, Jordan Morgan, 40, Kamari Lassiter, 67, Marshawn Nealon, 78, Jatavion Sanders, 100, Luke McCaffrey, 139, uh, Kitten Oladopo, Oladopo, 152 is the safety, and then Eric Watts at 222. 
So that is yeah. my draft for that one. So I agree, um, I agree, I agree with Jesse. I like Luke McCaffrey. I think he, I think he could be. Yeah, a, I do a, too. Guy, you know. So, have um, you got one scouse that you did with trades? Because this will be the interesting one. That's quite. Yeah, funny. I have. I have. Uh, do you want me to go first? Let's, yeah, let's get it pulled up, so, mate. You so let's read. So, so before we do that, let's read for, from mine to to Scotty's in the in the in the chat there. In the chat, yeah. What yeah. Are we going? Who, a, who's a, who's, a, who's, a, who's a, better? Yeah, a b or whatever. You know, anything like that. Or for me, probably f. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, and see what you see what you guys think, and do a all consensus. Who's used to win him in the first non trades mock draft? Oh, we'll see. So. Oh, I'll give him close. Ah, win. Yeah, it's Brian. Scouse. Yeah, boy. Brian says Scouse. Yes. Rod has said Rosa said Scouse just for Bob means. Uh, personally, like the two tackles. <laughs> ah, yeah. Scouse, you won this one, Bob means. You love that name, bro. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's Top true. Three, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I got cornerback and tackle, oh, so Scott G's give it to me. He's, he's, nah. he's their namesake. It's their namesake. Well done, That's Scott. A, yeah, I like you that. You two Scots, two Scots sticking Kids together. Sticking, yeah, sticking yeah. together, mate, yeah. yeah. If you just oh, yeah. um, you want to present your one with trades, mate. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. So, so this one, this one's going to be, um, this one's going to be interesting. Know. A lot of guys are going to go, head's going to fall off when, when you see this one. All right, so let's on. see. Let's see where it is. Okay, one sec. Let me... Uh, Get this one set up. Oh. I can do my mate if you want, whatever's easiest, bud. No, we don't, mate. Just, uh, just don't know why it won't change. It's all right. So that's the wrong one, go. isn't it? That's the wrong one, mate. Let me go. So that's the, the wrong one. Yeah, yeah. You're okay. Has that gone in? So, so there you go, Jesse. If you've got it there, it's Drake May, Patrick Paul, Kieran Amagaji, Ben Sinot, Jeremiah Trotter, Cole Bishop, Jatavion or Javon Solomon, uh, Marshawn Lloyd, running back, and Bob Means. Why won't this work? Oh, that's well annoying because sure. people are going to love this one as well. Um, I'm not sure, mate. Uh, one second, I'll get mate. mine up. I'll get mine up, mate. Two secs. We'll, we'll do mine. There you go. So here is my mock with trades. But first, be before we get to that, what I will do is I will share the how I got there first is what I want to do. Uh, here is the, the trades itself. So hopefully we can we can see that. I'm not sure. Nope. Yeah, I've got. Oh, have you got yours up? Have you, mate? Yeah. Okay. I've just got yeah, mine yeah. sorted. I've got mine. Go on. You go. Now, you so. go. You go with yours, then, dude. You go with yours. You sure? Yeah. 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 <laughs> JJ. <laughs> JJ. Oh, seriously. Wow. You picked JJ. He picked JJ. He's got Scott sent me. What do you mean, Scotty sent you? Are you on a boat? I've not sent these bombs. <laughs> go on, Scouts. Get yours up there, mate. Let's hopefully get that done. The joys of Streamyard and presenting her. Oh, here we go. He did. He went eleven and took JJ. <laughs> that's my that's my head fell off. What? <laughs> you traded down to eleven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Look at the boys I got there though. Some real dudes in that in that in this draft. Okay, go ahead, mate. You take you you take. Yeah, it well, obviously you got your JJ. You know, I knew that would be a big one for Scott my boy G. over there, Scotty G. Um. But yeah, man. I mean, um, JJ McCarthy. I'm happy with JJ McCarthy at around that level. No more than that. And even I'm thinking I'm pushing it. I'm reaching a little bit. Um, so yeah, um, we all know about JJ. Not one shit. <laughs> and uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We we'll see what he's all about. But look at me tackles there, bro. You got me Latham, JC Latham, J- JC Latham, and Tyler Guyton. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so beasts. Because look at me, I got a 23, I got 27 as well. So I went back into the first. I got two first rounders. Oh. Um, then I got Byron Murphy at 35. So I had a, I had a three, two, uh, two, three, three second rounders as well. Wow. So uh, yeah, I obviously got a haul for my uh, for my number two pick. Um, Byron Murphy, TJ Tampa. Um, yeah. Got right. me cornerback in there, boys. No, I didn't get it in the first mm-hmm. one. 
I got Ben Sinat again. He was there. I had to take him again. He's, he's, he's one Marshall of my favorite Nealand. tight ends. <laughs> and there's your mate here, Marshall Nealand. Yeah, um, that, that's why I said I, I liked him. I liked him as well. Yeah. Um, Cedric Gray is a Cedric great Gray, pick as well. Really good, really good linebacker. Um, and then my, one of my favorite guys in the later rounds is Mike Sainestrill, uh, yeah. cornerback at Michigan. The guy's, the guy's got it, man. He really does. Um, he's got that kind of straight line speed. Okay, sometimes he can get a little core with his hips once in a while, twisting the wrong way or a little bit slow in the hips, but not, not by a lot, but the half second could be enough. But the guy can read the game as well. The guy's excellent. The guy's an excellent corner. I really, I think he's going to be one of the steals of the draft. I really do. Um, and then look at your boy there. You've got Luke McCaffrey. Yeah. He, he, was, he was one of my... He's one of my boys there, um, and one of yours that you mentioned. And then Gurendo, he's the guy who had a really good um, combine. Um, okay. And as, I, I'm happy to take him. And again, special teams, thinking about that one. Um, and then obviously you've got Sion Vaki, which again, that was just purely a bit of a who's left type of thing. I don't know much about oh, Vaki, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I th- I'd, I'd love that kind of draft. That, this is my favourite draft out of my two that I made. Even though it's got JJ in there, you know that's the only thing that kind of knocks it down. But I mean, I could have went Phoenix, I could have went Bonix at eleven. But again, they that's big time reaching for them too at eleven. But um, I had to go JJ because obviously I traded down. And the big boys went, you know, the other three, the other three guys went. So yeah, I was just we're just saying in the chat there, Scouts, while you weren't while you're on there, we're just saying that basically that rookie draft bill is going to be enormous. It's <laughs> not bad. You- these and even if it is, about. And, he, and, he, and even if it is, we've got we've got the cap space. Don't worry, boys. Absol- absolutely right. Deuce has said there. Mash the like button. Go on, like and subscribe. Do, do, do us a favor. Yeah, man. Thank I mean, you for that. I mean, yeah. Okay. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of dudes there, but again, I think most of those guys could be on the team. There's not many guys that you yeah. think mm, they're going to get caught quite easily, barring injuries or whatever. You know. So, yeah, man. Bring that on. I'd love something like that. That'd be a great draft. Okay. So. My trade de- uh, my trade details I've shared, and this is where mine goes a bit. Uh, has that actually happened? So, do you want me to tell them that before 40. you start yours, mate? Before you start yours, no. I'll answer Rod's question. Yeah, go ahead. Achieve those numbers. Question. Well, basically, um, uh, basic um, the Pats wanted to trade with me. They offered me two second rounders, mm-hmm. so so dropped down one spot. So I took it. And then, um, who was it? Um, I think it was Minnesota came up to four, uh, up to three, give me the two first rounders of this year. Um, so I think that's that's how I got it. So I got two trades dropping down, and then I went to 11. That was where Minnesota would have been, you know what I mean? So, um, so the Vikings came up to four, sorry, to three, and I went down to 11. But yeah, man, I got so I got two firsts and I got two second rounders. I mean, I think that that your team's beefed up with that draft, mate. I, I'd be hyped with that. So for me here, I had the similar trade offer <laughs> from New England to go up one spot. So they offered me pick three, pick 34, pick 68, and a 2025 first round draft pick. Um, and that was for pick two and pick 40. So I accepted that and I, I took that. And then um, moving on from there, what do we got? Uh, let me just stop sharing this one. And then... I will share my screen again. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Deuce, you know, we definitely have the cap. Exactly, a lot of a lot of deals expiring in twenty twenty eight. Yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of cap space. One of the, still one of the best teams with the available cap space, even after free agency. So, I definitely think, even though we got like you know, my trade there, for example, I got like twelve guys, and most of them are obviously first, second, third rounders are going to cost more. But, but to be fair, they said we can afford it. So, so why not? Okay, so I've got another um, another trade here, but I'll give you the trade details as well before I get going. So here, oh, that's the the New England one. So we don't want to see that. that that's that's done. Um, we want to see. Sorry about this. I will get the other trade up in a second. Let me get that. Up. Are you on about Luke McCaffrey? Um, yeah, I've, I think I've, he is. I've, 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 I've seen bits. I've seen some bits of him, and this this guy, this guy looks 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 legit, man. Um, but I've not seen a lot of him to really hone down on his actual skill set per se. But I just know that. Let's face it, he's got Christian McCaffrey genes. Even if he's only half the player he is, that'll do me. Now I gave up the absolute world to get pick five. Okay, 
So bear in mind they've traded. Bear in mind they've traded. You traded down to get all these picks, and then you've gone back up to five. Yes, you'll you'll see my method of my madness in a minute. So pick thirty six, pick sixty seven, pick six, pick seventy eight, pick one hundred. A first, New England's first, a second next year, and Pittsburgh sixth next year got me to pick five, which is absolutely wild. Um, yeah, I know. It, I it guess you've got like up. three players to pick in this whole draft. Is that it? Pretty much, man. Yeah, but <laughs> they're good. They're good. So. Uh, you know, I can't moan, and I'll share the I'll share the mock now. So this one, I went Jaden Daniels at two. Then you can see there, I went number at five, Joe uh, at three. Sorry, my apologies, because I'd already traded down with New England. So I took Jaden Daniels. They took Drake May. Um, then at number five, I took Joe Alt. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> there you go. So what I think here is, you'd fire me, really? Okay, hundred percent fired. On. 100% if, you can fire. get, if you can get a, your left tackle for the next 10 years and you have to give up the... Well, the, the whole draft to get, get them. No, yeah. you don't. No, you don't. No, you, you have there, mate. Not, I've, got, I've got a few. I've, got a, I've still got a few players here. So thir- uh, next pick was at 34, and I've got a, a Donai Mitchell from uh, Texas wide receiver. Um, very good. Lengthy, long. Um, I believe he's quite tall as well. So he, he's that. He's got the speed as well, um, which you ought to play outside. Um, and that's something that we need as a red zone target. 68, Chris Braswell from uh, Alabama. Good edge rusher. Um, one of the top edge rushers in this draft. Again, he's got the length and size. Hasn't necessarily got the speed um, to be, you know, out of the box elite, uh, elite draft, uh, elite. Russia, but he has got um, a good development um, ceiling to him. Uh, Jared Wiley, tight end at TCU, needed a tight end. He's tight end five on most people's uh, big boards, so quite comfortable with taking him as well. Uh, Elijah Jones, cornerback out of Boston College. There's some interest already from the commanders for this guy uh, at one four two. More than happy to take him as well. And then my final pick was Mark Perry, a safety out of TCU. Now, I know it's not sexy. I know we've traded all over the spot, but I got Joe Alton, Jaden Daniels as my first two picks. I got a wide receiver that everybody's talking about. I got an edge rusher that everybody's talking about. And then I beefed it up with a corner, a tight end and a safety, which is all of the needs for this team filled. But yeah, but that's if these guys mean... are good. I mean, the Jared Wiley or Willie, whatever his name is, I don't know much about yeah, that. Yeah, he's dude. good. Nah, he's, he's good. Just, just gosh, man. But the thing is, though, I mean, yeah, so I, I let's see. With the talent in this draft, I wouldn't mind getting more picks this year. I agree, Deuce. Yeah, I agree. I agree. agree and I, I think this, I say the way to do it is what I did, basically, you know, <laughs> is stonewall these dudes. This move makes me nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's just so, dodginess, yeah. just so, pure, pure dodginess. So basically, oh, yeah. Scouts, what you're saying there is you've won both rounds. Yeah, cheers for that. Yeah. Well, uh, the first one was closer, but the second one, I think I smoked. I smoked you there, and the second one, I think, mate, being honest, you can't beat you can't beat having <laughs> Joe on. You know what I mean? Come on, the best yeah, tackle in like, the entire draft. You got no players though. You got like three dudes. That's all you've got. We have got like Six. twenty holes. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you've got players. Players. I get it then, but <laughs> no. yeah. See what? See what? See what? Oh. See Peter's going to be calling me later. He knows. He knows deep down. He does. He does. But yeah, no. I mean, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, know, that's the know, that's the killer know, that you're giving away first and first two rounds next year. It's even worse, bro. Um, that, that is a bad. That that's a big time reach. Nah, reach, 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 <laughs> reach, reach. I don't know. Yeah, look, right, that's way overpay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've been killed there, bro. <laughs> Proper killed. Yeah. So I think I liked it. You liked it, but you ruined us for the next two years because we've got no draft <laughs> picks in the first and second round. <laughs> I don't care. Okay. Peter's can Peter's Peter's and can Peter said he wants to blow right. through the draft. You don't want to give away mm. that capital, man. <laughs> Just go mad in free agency next year. It'll be fine. Be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll push yeah, we'll it down see. the road. Well, we've got on to our um thank you for, for getting involved in this. You're right, you're right. It isn't oh, is isn't worth two first and, and three seconds. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Hey, what's um, that about, Scott? What's that about? You, th- you think I'm just got got no skill? Is that is that what you're talking about here, Scott? Got no skill. <laughs> I have no. I've been watching draft day. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right, Rod. Give me that kicker or that punter, whatever the hell it was. <laughs> right at the end. 
Add this guy in, no, no. whoever that was, special teams guy or whatever. I know, I do love Alt. You're right. I do love Alt, and so does so does Scouse. I think he's. Yeah, I do. I do love Alt. I think he's unbelievable. Technically, he's, he's he's sound. He's probably the best best in the draft. But again, as I say, he's not worth two twos and two and three seconds. Sorry, two first and three seconds. He's not worth that. So. To be no, fair, I, I did I did do a bit of a, a mess about draft a mock draft as well actually, but um I've, I've left that one at home and I did draft alt at two just to piss everybody off, so <laughs> so you know that have been we don't know we don't know what's going to happen so yeah Scouse the winner of the yearly mock draft I'll give you give you your, give you your dubs now well done yes we'll get onto our we'll get onto our questions then I suppose for the. Uh, for, for the week, we've got we've got loads of questions. <laughs> we've got loads of questions. Um, me. First one, that's me, Jesse boy. That's me. <laughs> Whoever drafted JJ wins. Yeah, well done, Jesse. You're right. So our uh, our good buddy Andy Burrows, uh, Washington UK fan uh, on Twitter, and also host of the Bunker podcast. If you haven't subscribed, go and subscribe to the Bunker. That's where you'll find my co-host Scouse and Jesse Martin, who is also in the chat with us today. Uh, the Bleeding Burgundy. Um, podcast host as well, so you know, we're all one network, all th all, th all three podcasts. So um, go and give them a go and give them a watch, a subscribe, and a listen. Back on, they were on a Monday. They had a show uh, came out Tuesday morning on the podcast. Very good show. It's nice to see um, all of you back behind the mic. So congratulations on that. Andy's asked, "What's your level of patience this season, and how much of a pass do you give the new coaching team and players?" In your opinion. Well, I mean, you have to give, you have to be patient to a certain extent, but you've got to see something to excite you for the season. The season after, if that makes sense, you've got to see something that's like, yeah, okay, I can see what they're doing here. Okay, we're not winning every game, but let's see, no, let's. You can see that there's a plan. There's a, there's a real plan, and they're gonna really achieve those those short term goals. Um, that's the. That's the hard part because you know, there's they say there is that breath of fresh air of Peters being in here. That there's no leaks, there's no, you know, we've done well in, in the drafts, uh, sorry, the draft in the uh, free agency, sorry. And then thinking, okay, now we just need to supplement with a few decent players from the draft, and we're laughing. And it, it could, it could very well turn on quickly. Um, but for me, you've got to kind of give it that kind of six to seven game mark realistically. Um, but for me, that wouldn't really bother me. Six, seven. If you if you win five games, for example, but you could definitely see the progression of say the quarterback or or your rookie left tackle that you've got there. That you see that he's growing, he's getting better every game towards the end of the season. He's getting better. You want to see those individual progressions. That's what you want to see really in the first year. I can't see us flying in there with, and just beating teams up willy nilly. I just can't see it just yet. Um, so we've got to kind of you no. Know, Temper it a little bit, but also still have some expectations because there's always going to be expectations as Washington fans, you know, because of our previous history. So, completely agree with you. I think we do have expectations. I don't have expectations to win many more games than we have won last season. I mean, four games is, yes, yeah, I mean, this not, team it's, already it's, is better than last year's team. Already. I agree, I agree. But so, we've got to expect um, to win more than four. That's the. I know. I know. I mean, if you can get to six, if you can get a six or seven wins, maybe, or you know, get to five hundred, even that's serious progression. I think for me, the this off season, we have to give everybody a pass. We've got GM, we've got you know, new ownership. This is his, this is Josh Harris's first time of having any involvement in a draft or owning this franchise completely on his own without the stench of the previous owner there. I think we all just have to be patient. You know, we know what a rookie quarterback is going to be like. He's going to be. He give us our lumps and he's going to be he's, he's going to be hit and miss at times but if you can see the progression as you said scouts you can see how it's going to move forward and you've got individuals that you know are going to succeed that you hit on the late round picks in the draft that you think to yourself hey we're building a team here you can then supplement that next off season with free agent signings where it's now becoming a destination of actually this isn't a shit show anymore this is where I want to play football. And people are coming to you and saying, yeah, it's a destination. I mean, we know it's a business and people will, will free agents will, were always trying to sign on a premium. They know that because they knew I'm going to Washington, my career is going to die pretty much because you're working for the previous ownership. 
I don't think that's there anymore. I think if we can prove that, hey, we're a middling team, which is not where we want to be, um, with a plan to move forward, I think that's totally acceptable. And I think people have to be patient with where we are. We are not going to be the Houston Texans from this year. My God, think, I'd love us to be like that. Yeah, I mean, they had a lot more it. They had a lot more structure there, you Correct. know, before, before dropping in CJ Stroud and... Tank Dell and those type of dudes, you know. So, um, so yeah, we can't expect to be what the Texans are, not no. just yet, anyway. So, and to pick and to pick up on Yam's comment here, I mean, Yam, by the way, um, congratulations on the move. I hope it's all going well. Um, I know you didn't necessarily want to be here, but we gave you a shout on the last pod, and um, yeah, thanks for being with us, buddy. We appreciate it. You mean he's six and six eleven, Yam. Yeah, yeah, six, yeah. He's saying seventeen games, bro. <laughs> yeah, 11 with a competitive play and no blowouts. I agree with that, mate. All you want to see is competitive football on the field every week where you're in it and then you might get beat by the better side. I can accept that. I can totally accept getting beat by the better side. And that's, you know, that's that's how it goes on the yeah. day. I but, think sometimes, though, when you're seeing, when you're seeing guys like Bobby Wagner showing up and, and oh, these, these type of yeah. dudes, you're thinking, come on then. Let's see if we can actually, that, that raises expectations. Agree. That's the problem. That that raises it to hit the ground running and expect him to do well first season. Because let's face it, we got Wagner on one year deal. And if you're lucky, you might have him another year the following year if we, if he does well. That's the mm -hmm. that's how lucky we're gonna get. I mean, we're hoping he could be the next um oh, what's his name? The legend of uh, linebacker we had when he got him when he was old. Oh what, London Fletcher. Yeah, Fletcher, London yeah. Fletcher, yeah. London Fletcher, yeah. I mean, we only got him at his age, 34, 33, 34. Correct, and he's yeah. another four yeah. years at a high level. So those things could happen. I mean, he's not as good in coverage as, as he was. No, Bobby's not as good as him in coverage. But he can still lay the wood. And he's great in the run game. A great leader. So this is this is the things you want to see, man. I love it, Rods. We'll get on that last wild card spot. Yeah. Why not, eh? Why not? Look, um, we're, looking but, for, we're looking for Canada Mike to say, you know, 12 wins. You know, that's what I'm yeah, waiting for. But. 14, yeah, it's 14 wins this year, boys. That's what yeah, it'll yeah, be. Yeah. Rod, um, go, moving on to you, mate. My, you're in the chat with us now. Um, everyone go and follow Rod. He's Rod Moore. 39721910 on Twitter or X. He has asked, is there a potential for a trade by us to get the tackle we need or want? And who is your favourite team to trade with? I mean, I, I don't think you're going to see elite elite left tackles being traded unless it's crazy. Crazy haul. Um, the only one you could possibly see is Trent Williams leaving. And that's the only one that I'd be interested in. But one, would he want to come back here? Two, what would be the draft compensation for him? You know, there's a there's a lot of ifs with that one. Uh, and it's only because he's having a problem with his contract. That's the reason why the Niners want him out, I think. Because um, mm. I think it's something like 76 million left on his three uh, three years left on his deal. I think that's what yeah. it's about. So it's quite a lot. Um, but again, you get an elite. So we've got the cap space. So we could we could potentially do it. He'd be the only guy I'd be looking for left tackle because you're not going to get like the, the, these these who? studs, these young these young lads coming up. I can't. I, I mean, like, um, who's the guy that we were looking at last year? And he plays was it Minnesota? Please for left tackle. Yeah, um, Darisol, wasn't it? We Darisol, yeah, yeah. Kiki Darisol. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get those type of dudes because you're not going to want to trade them. Um, but you know, for me, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you who we we could sign. Um, and I know no one's talking about it. We have to see what the medicals are like, whether it checks out. Bakhtiari is still out there and he still wants to play football, even for one year. Yeah, I know he's old. He isn't going to cost you a huge amount of money. Just yeah. depend what, what money he wants. I mean, is it? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be huge. I you've, really got don't. Trust, you've got to trust his knees. I mean, he's, he's that's got what really I mean. bad knees. That's, that, that's the problem. If his medical checks out, he wants to play football. Yeah, he's, he's, still, he's, he's still good. He's, he's still stopped. very good. You know. But do you give but, him a year? And yeah, yeah, he's going to want goes, 20 mil plus for one year. If it, all goes, if it all goes wrong, you've got a rookie potential left tackle coming up behind, and you've also still got um, Lucas as well. I'd take that. I mean, 10, 10 million a one-year deal, something he's, like he's that. He's not going to take 10 mil. I mean, come on, man. He was on he 28 is, million or something at, he, at, at, at he's, the, the Green he's Bay. Been re he's been released. Yeah, who's, no, he's got no contract got, now. But the thing is, mate, he was on 20 mil a year. He's not going to take five or 10 mil now for one year. He's not going to do it. Yeah, it's going to be 20 be. mil minimum. So uh, and that's probably the reason why he's still out there, because guys will probably want to sign him. 
Well, it's just too expensive. I think it just depends on the medical, mate. I really do. Um, nice, Ian. Thanks for that. In my opinion, Scott wins standing pat, but br your br bro wins in the trade back version. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Um, That's my own brother as well. Shows shows much he loves me, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> F you, bro. Two nil, two -nil Scouse. Two nil. Yeah. <laughs> a agree, Jam. If we make a wild card, even losing round one, that'd be something to celebrate and fill the pubs over. Bang on. Yeah, I agree with you completely. Yeah, I just can't. I, I mean, it'd be nice. To, it'd be nice to hit the ground running, but I just can't. There's like a positive optimism, but again, also the realist in me kind of kicks in as well at times, and you think, look, man, you know, if we're anywhere near playoff contention by by like the final two, three games of the season, I'd be well happy with that, even if we don't so make it, even if we don't so make it, because um, it's just because you're just getting, you can just see, all I want to see is the progression of the players and not just wins. I want to win. And I want to win comfortably in certain games. I want to blow teams away, which we've not done in a long, long time. Every time we win a game, it's by bloody three points or two points, and we're shitting ourselves at the last kick of the game, and the guy's missing the field goal from 60 to win it for them. You know, that's the kind of shit we're dealing with when we win. So we need to start blowing teams away, man. So we that's do. what I want to see. I want to see, even if it's just once this year, we, we just blow somebody away. That'd be ace. Just to, just to put the foot down, you know, put the foot on the throat and say, come on, then come, out, come after us, and they can't get us. Be great for Dallas. Uh, if you did that to Dallas. <laughs> wouldn't it just? Wouldn't it just? Yeah. I want to do it to the Giants as well, man. So bad. We're sick of the Giants. <laughs> sick to the death of them. Uh, Rod's second question. He said, "Is Drake May in pole position now?" After what AP said about being is not essential to start Week One, uh, and also is he perceived? He's perceived as the better long-term solution, as Jay Gruden said on John Kimes' podcast. Uh, for me, I'll, I mean, Scouse, you can you can follow on to this, but. Yeah, I agree that. Well, is Jaden Dan? Sorry, is Drake May in pole position? No, I don't think so. Not necessarily. I is don't know what he's getting the for. Is 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 J is Jaden Daniels in pole position? No, I think that the way that Adam Peters, when I've watched that interview, um, he spun that. I think he spun that in a purposeful way to say, let's throw people off the scent here by not mentioning what we need to do, by saying, oh, he doesn't have to start immediately. Look, listen, if we're drafting a quarterback at two, the guy is starting, irrespective of, of who we pick. Irrespective, they are a starting quarterback. You're not going to trot Mariota out there for six games. If you do trot Mariota out there for six games, something's gone seriously, seriously wrong. Um, you know, we've not even picked the guy that you, he's turned out to be not what you thought. Um you know, Drake May, yes, I know he's got less of a he's got a higher ceiling, whatever that means, um, and less of a floor, but and he and he's perceived as not being an immediate right out the box ready starter. But for me, I think either either of these two, even JJ McCarthy, if they go down that right, uh, that I think that they're that they're all gonna start. I agree with you, Yam. I think I think Drake May's probably the best pro prospect in the entire draft. Being honest, but I'm still leaning 60 40 towards Jaden <clears throat> Daniels. Maybe I'm believing the smoke. I don't know. I really don't. Yeah, know. I think I think I think you're smoking that reefer up, baby. That's what you're doing because <laughs> you know this is a. Uh, I mean, for me, May is May has got the highest upside by by all of them. Being mm. honest, the highest upside is May. Why? Because he's a bit more raw. He is. You know, he, he's only 21 years old. He's two to three years younger than Jaden Daniels. Imagine what May could do with three years extra at college. And we're oh, saying yeah. that Daniels is like, it's 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 neck and neck between May and Daniels. That tells me straight away May's a better player because he's played two years and Daniels has played five. Daniels should be like unbelievably higher than him on, on, on this on everyone's draft board. And he's not. So that tells me that May is the highest, he's got the highest upside, the highest ceiling. Um, and that's why I'm picking that's why I picked Drake May in my draft. And most of the time when I pick at two, I pick Drake May because I say he's young, he's got the size, he's got the, he's, he's got everything that you need. Yes, he's got some things to work on, sure. You know, his footwork, his mechanics a little bit can be a little bit rangy, a little bit long, and sometimes that'll catch you out at the NFL level. Um, but those things can be fixed, especially with really good coaching, and we've got excellent coaches now. Um, so I, so and yeah, I mean, the, you know, I think um, Jan mentioned that yeah, May doesn't May won't be benched or won't be starting, and unless like he's injured himself in camp or something, that'd be the only way he doesn't mm -hmm. play. You know, he's going to be the bona fide starter. Agreed. Same with if, if you get Daniels, he's the bona fide starter. It, it's not. 
there's, there's no difference there. It's just going to be guaranteed. No matter who it is, they're going to be starting and it doesn't matter. Agreed. We've got to take our lumps. Yeah, we will take our lumps. May will, will probably be quite poor, maybe in the first few games. He probably will. But the upside's there. The coaching's there. Our guys aren't going to be there to try and set them up like it, like um, the enemy was with Sam Howell. The reason, and another thing, you know, we got with Sam Howell. Did you read about Sam Howell? Like, he's, he's too much of an alpha. Yeah. He's too yeah. much of an alpha. So, that him and May just wouldn't be able to like kind of connect and stay like that, if that makes sense, and kind of be teammates without ruining the dressing room and stuff. That's the reason why they traded them out. So that tells me that we're going Drake May. I think that's so the too. only that's the only thing that can go off because they're not le- letting anything else go. They're not letting anybody not little not, no little snippets here or there or leaking information. There's none of that going on. But what I can see is what they have done, and they traded Sam Howell away. So now the key is here is that what you need to work out is any of these quarterbacks, doesn't matter who it is, can they handle playing for Washington? And what I mean by that, it isn't just playing for the team, playing for the like 30,000 fans that go there every week, you know, because obviously our stadium's always empty. But I'm talking about nation's capital, I'm talking about the prestige of the of the overall franchise, the location. That there's you know hundreds of thousands of fans in Washington all around the area, suburbs. Can he handle when shit goes wrong? And that's the only thing I would say about when I picked JJ in my draft is that everyone knows him as a winner. No one's ever given him any shit. He's always, he's been the man around town all the time for two years that he started. Can he handle playing for a bad a bad team? Because let's face it, we were a bad team. We only picking second mm. if we weren't a bad team. And then can he handle when we, when he has a bad game when Fans get on his case when the media gets on his case because you know the media in the East is way different than anywhere else in the whole in the whole of the NFL. It's much more scrutinized here. So you've got to have that, not just football mentality. I'm talking about actual real mentality of hard, like a hard man, you know, hard, can handle anything, water off the duck's back every single time that anyone gives him any shit. That's that's the kind of quarterback, and it's got to be genuine, not just faking it. You've got to be able to do it. To be able to handle it because you're not going to come in here and, and do CJ Stroud and everyone's going to love you straight away. It's not going to work like that. You are going to have bad times. You are going to get kicked in the nuts. Can you handle it from the media? Can you handle it from, you know, I say national media, local media, the fans themselves, or all, all our podcasts? You know, we'll all, we'll all have we'll all have an opinion. So that's Absolutely. my big that's and that's my biggest prep in floor with, with JJ. He's never been through any bad times, but you know, it is what it is. In that mistake, <laughs> that makes sense. But yeah, so cut backing off that, then we've got another quick question here from Steve Lim. He is at Steve Lim underscore DC. He's also Steve the host of he's also the host of the Command This podcast. Um, you can find them at Command This on YouTube. Uh, being that we hope to see you lads week one, would you be mad if they trotted out Mario uh, at the home opener <laughs> while the rookie sits and develops? And Yam had something in the chat as well saying it's great that. You know, all quarterbacks can learn for sitting for a year, but quarterbacks also learn from doing as well. So, what are your thoughts on Steve's question and Deluxe's point as well? I mean, I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be happy if I ever saw Mariota play. I've seen Mariota play many times for, for different teams. We know what he's about. He is bang average at best. At best. Um, so I don't I don't want to see any I don't want to see this guy on the field at all. So Apart from preseason, yeah, that's no, it I don't even want to see him then. I'd rather see the, 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 the I'd rather see Driscoll, Driscoll play, you know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, my is from. bad. Mario is a bad QB, bro. I mean, he's good at running the ball, that's all about all he's good at, really. Um, so that might help with um May's running style when we trade when we get May in, but but besides that, yeah, I, I don't like Mario to, to be honest. I thought it was a, a bad one. I, but... I think I think that Netflix documentary killed him. You know what I mean? The yeah, way we just, just walked off on his team and left him. Yeah, on his team. I was like, that's oh, not a okay. poor. That's not. That's not. That's not a team leader. That's not a guy you want your new superstar quarterback to be learning off, is it? Really, kind of shit like that. Right. That doesn't. I hope he's. I hope he's here. He knows he's holding the clipboard, and um, you know he's he, he's going to do exactly what we want him to do as a mentor and a, from a leadership point of view. But not sure on that. Um, I mean, I the, yeah. The next question, um, which is Paul Flander, Paul Fiander Turner. He is at Havrin. Uh, hang on, 
having a ray having a radox on Twitter is what he is. He <laughs> said, seeing as we don't have any international games to look forward to this year, what should we push the new ownership to be looking at for its global fan base? Great question. Mm -hmm. Any ideas on that one, Scouse? So it's a difficult question, that one, because to, it is. to create the thing is, is that it's a lot easier to do anything globally when you're winning. True. That's the first thing you got to do because, as you know, we're a UK, we're a UK fan, fan, you know, pod. I mean, how many guys have we got, you know, over here? A couple of thousand, maybe. Yeah. In in, in the maybe. whole UK, because oh, it, 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 and all our guys are all our guys are older because they, we were good. Back then, and it's stuck. Yeah, with the, we were the 80s and the 90s. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're not getting an 18 year old now over here going. You know what? I really want to get into NFL. Who should I? Who should I pick? And, and oh, it's, it's Gary Washington, because they're not any good. If you've got no affiliation to them in any way, you're going to pick at that time when you decide you're going to be a fan of a team. You're going to pick a team that's good. Or something's blown your mind, like a certain play from a certain player, like you mentioned with RG3. You know, for mm -hmm. your for your fandom. You know those type of things. I, I get it. I, I mean, I got into it through my brother. That's my fault. You know, I should I should have ignored him and went to put some to speak to somebody else. <laughs> but my but my but my but this is my team never going anywhere. You know, because us English stand and, and die on the sword for our teams. Um, so you're trying to you're trying to recruit say UK new UK guys, new German fans, whatever it is. They've got to be decent, especially if you're trying to get the youngins in. They've got to be good. You've got to be a good team. Yeah. Go, do you know what? What about Washington? When you look at them, watch how they play the game, see what you think. Rather than, oh my God, they've been turd for 20 years. And that's the hard part. So for me, if you can get the win right, everything else will follow to a certain extent. You know, you can get us all in, you know, help us out. We can we can get us put our reach out there a little bit. We can also no, and there's way more people than me, uh, or than us, sorry, than um that I've got loads more fans who can reach other parts of the world as well so those things can happen but you've got to you've got to have a product to sell to these to these up and comers because that's what you really want you want the youngsters coming in because then they'll be fans for 40 50 years you know so i mean you, you you're right scouse exactly what you're saying paul i think to try and answer your question here scouse is correcting what he's saying it's difficult now because they've branched out um, and they've taken international rights each teams from various different countries um, so Kansas City's looked at Brazil, they've looked at Germany, uh, Buccaneers have looked at Germany as well. Unfortunately, Washington didn't take any overseas territories. They were not willing to market themselves abroad for whatever reason. Um, don't get me wrong, we are very lucky and um, the team have been very, very good to us over the years. Uh, when we've gone over to the, U the US, they've been exceptional with us and we cannot fault them for what they do for us. But we're already fans and trying to grow a global brand is going to be a problem. I think the biggest things that you can do to grow the game internationally are exactly the same things that were brought up in last week's show with FA Obada when we talked about it. It's things like the NFL Academy. It's making sure that you're growing that talent through the academy that we have in London. It's based in London. It has its own schooling system. Then you get in 17, 18 year old kids, you know, 60. I think they take them from 12 now. So you're going up from 12 on to, um, you know, 18, 19 years old. They take getting scouted. They're getting D1 scholarships in college. Then they're going off to go from there and they're getting NFL, you know, and at college football scholarships and hopefully onto the next level into the NFL through that pathway. If we can build that pathway, then, you know, you're looking at going, right, well, actually we're now building something here. And I think eventually if the pathway builds and the NFL Academy builds, the international player pathway then comes in as well. You know, if you've got superstars from other sports like Lewis Rees-Samit, who's, you know, just signed with the Chiefs, Welsh winger in rugby, he's quite well known over this side of the pond. Um, if you're into that sort of sport, you know what I mean? You you understand, hey, this, that's Lewis Reese Summit. Um, if he does really well, or if other players from the international player pathway do really well, again, it's growing the brand of the NFL globally. Then I think the next thing for growing it in, enormously in the UK or in Europe would be to have a franchise here. 
I think ultimately having a franchise in the UK will happen. Um, and the Jacksonville Jaguars will probably be that franchise that will do it. They're the least supported club in the whole of the NFL. And, you know, they're, they're here more than any other team. So it makes... Florida have already got two other NFL teams correct. as well. It, you know, correct. Or well, so three, three including co- Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. It, it makes complete sense for them to be the, you know, the UK franchise. Would it mean I would move? Absolutely not. You know, colours are pinned to the mass. We're always going to be Washington fans, um, irrespective, because once you, as Scal said, once you, you, you're on the sword, you know, you die by the sword. Live, live by it, die by it. But at the same time, it, for us... Once that's kind of established, we're talking three, four, five years down the down the line. That's when Washington need to start break re- reaching out and saying, yeah. "Let's, you know, let's make let let's make it make it a crack in Europe. Let's see how we can go." Because there are plenty of fan bases out there. We've got Australians, Belgians, Germans. You know, we speak to them regularly. Um, you know, fans from abroad, and they're, they're all out there. Um, you only have to look at X, and and, and you'll find them out there. So, um, yeah, disappointing that we didn't go for the franchise rights of, of getting a country. But, um, yeah, great question, mm-hmm. Paul. Really appreciate that. Deuce, next one. Deuce, host of the Red Zone in the Lab. He's been in our chat as well. Uh, go and follow Red Zone in the Lab podcast. And he's also at Red Zone in the Lab. He said, what will have to happen at pick two that will have you in awe or disbelief? Go on then, Scouse. I'll let you go first for that. Well, one. I've got two. Well, there's just well, you know the first one, don't you? I mean, <laughs> JJ, you know, G- yeah, JJ had two. I mean, JJ had two. I'll be like getting disbelievers in. I, I really hate that pick and shoot me now type of feeling. That's what I would have at that point. Um, also, I do think if you did pick something like Joe Alt as well, that would shock me as well, to be fair. I know I've been messing about with it and stuff, but um, that would that would. Proper shock me. Um, the only thing that would give me anything real awe would be if Caleb dropped to yeah. two. Now that would be the big awe one. They go, oh, let's go and get, and then straight away everything gets ripped up. I'm going straight for Caleb, but um, but yeah, it's a different. It's, it's um, it'd be interesting on the draft day. I tell you that. So that would the same with me. The awe, the awe moment would be how have we got Caleb Williams? You are literally sprinting that pick up to the podium, and then in disbelief. We take a wide receiver at, at two, Malik, like neighbors or somebody like that. I'd be like, what? Not even Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, there's like, someone to do. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, I think JJ would be an absolute shock, but I don't think it would be disbelief. You know, I'd be like, whoa, okay, okay. You know what I mean? That's I'd, I'd be walking off if we had JJ at two. But seriously, I, I, I'm walking I, off. I, Deluxe, I don't know the stadium lease term for Jacksonville. I've got no idea on that. But only it must be pretty close, about, though, because they are keep, it's be. It's got to be pretty I, close. They keep, talking, they keep talking about a new stadium, but at the same time, I do know that Jacksonville, obviously, the reason we know about this is Jacksonville, um, their owner is, is Shard Khan, who owns you know 50% of Wembley Stadium. He owns Fulham Football Club in London. He owns... Um, AEW, so he is really well connected to London oh, already at the moment. Well, it's Sundays, yeah, not me, yeah. but yeah. Oh, um, here we go. Yeah, Deluxe has Googled it, so it's, um, yeah, so it's 2029. 2029. So that's time wise, that's 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 pretty good. You know what I mean? We're at four, five, six, yeah, so five years, about right, yeah, probably about right. And there's already a stadium in place for them at Spurs. It's already got the locker room. He owns half of it already. So yeah. Well, Wembley owns half of. Yeah, he don't own Spurs, but I know. Oh, it'll it'll be Wembley if he takes it. It'd be Wembley Mm -hmm. that it'll be played at. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it won't be Spurs. Not not for a full franchise. No, no, you're right. Um, Yam Yam Starch. He's he's put a question here. He says. Who do you believe is blowing more smoke? All the news pundits, journos, Twitter and Facebook experts and podcasters who are riding high on Jaden Daniels or all the NFL insiders and professionals that are riding high on Drake May? I think I think both teams do are blowing both. smoke up each other's ass, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, you know, this is how it this is how it always is around this time. It always is, because no one wants to give away the the they they're perceived um control that they've got of what they're going to be doing with their pick especially when you're this high up in the draft when you're in the in the 15s the 20s like we have been recently over the past few years it's kind of like let's just see how it goes and see what drops but when you're at two 
you are one of the head decision makers, you know what I mean? So, and they don't want to give away any inkling of any power, any negotiation power as well, because teams will want number two. I can see Minnesota really trying to get it. Um, and they, I think they will throw a lot at it to try and, to try and get number two. So it's, yeah, I think, to answer your question, Yam, I think both. I don't think, I, I do think that it's, it's, it's getting ridiculous, though, the hatred between if you can only pick one quarterback. It's got to oh, be Daniel. Yes, it's got to be May, and you got to be in one camp. No, I mean let's face it, right? These all these guys are good. They all got the strengths. They all got some weaknesses, you know. But that's college quarterbacks. They're always going to have that. Um, but as I say, for me, it's about reaching for quarterbacks, and that's what I don't want. That's why I don't want to pick JJ at two, like 10, 11, something like that. Okay, I can deal with that as long as you drop back and, like, for example, what I got, or two first and two seconds to go from two to to eleven. I can deal with that. I can handle that. Because you still get a decent quarterback and you can have you can way build your team a lot faster. Um, but yeah, I think JJ and two mate have blow my mind a big no, just shoot me now. I think to your point there, Rod's got it spot on again. He said, I think that as it's all quiet in Ashburn and they're trying to fill column inches. Mm. I couldn't agree more. The offseason's really difficult to fill column inches at and times. Especially when they're not telling you anything. Yeah, there's weeks There's weeks where you're sitting here going, all right, okay, what are we doing? What's happening? There's there's nothing to talk about, Scouts. We've tried to keep the mic rolling as podcasters. Imagine if this is your full-time job. You know, you're a journalist, you're a newspaper yeah. editor, you're, you know, you, you're out there. I mean, the John Kimes of the world, the Nicky Javalas, the Sam Fortiers, all these people are out there. Matt Paris trying to smash out column inches to make sure, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this. They haven't got a clue. They've got no idea, uh, as anyone else, what is going on within that building. And what's really been good this season, to even keep it quiet, is the team is releasing the signings. You normally hear, mm. oh, John Kime or whoever has been drip-fed saying, oh, the commander's agreed to terms with this player. And it's like, well, actually, no. The only people who are getting the news out before is probably Ian Rappaport's or your Adam Schefters of the world. They're the ones who are breaking the news. Then immediately, it's the commanders who are website. putting it out yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah, who yeah, are yeah. putting mm -hmm. it out saying, we've done this. Mm -hmm. the, the journos and the local journos are not hearing yeah, they're getting anything. screwed, really. They're getting screwed over, aren't they? Let's face it, you think about and it that's that way. good. That's good. Yeah, and it's I mean, it's long, good, so they can't twist long, it. Yeah, so they can't twist it. a long, long yeah. off-season, long, long time. Now the draft's about here. We're then going to get into practice. They're going to have a bit more to talk about. And before you know it, September will be here, or August will be here. It'll be in pre-season, and it's like, hold on, football's actually back. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, it goes quicker than you think yeah, it does. Because I mean, Yeah, because obviously you say you've got like a couple of weeks now of just have nothing. There's really nothing yeah. to talk about. Then you've got your draft. Then you'll talk about that for maybe one or two weeks, what you, you picked yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And then after that, there'll be nothing Undrafted again for a month. free agents. Weeks and, you yeah. know, that, well, it's training camp then, isn't it? We're into training camp. Exactly. The looks. All the best reporters are going to other teams to find out and trying mm -hmm. to sneak, sneak little snippets from agents. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And Absolutely. agents will do that. They will give out little bits. But if they're genuinely wanting to, them to sign for us, even the agents aren't saying shit at the moment either. Have you noticed that? It's very good, and because that's of, I think that's down yeah. to Adam Peters as well. Yeah, definitely he's known straight. for so long. Yeah, you want you you want our guy? You said you want to come work, work for us or play for us. Your 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 client. Mm -hmm. You keep your mouth shut until it's done. And the story. two more two more questions, Scouse Tim Towner, who's at Tim Towner o six two nine. He wanted um, to watch this live, but it's ta the time thing. Great for him. Yeah. I, I, I get it. He says non football related. I've recently given up coffee for tea. Apologies for stereotyping all Brits as tea drinkers, but what <laughs> brand of tea do you drink? Tetley? Question mark. And what type of tea do you drink? Is it breakfast tea or Earl Grey? Go on, Scouse, if you want to go through that. <laughs> well, for me, mate, it's, it's good old fashioned um, fashion that Yorkshire tea. Great. That's, yeah, I knew that, you'd say that. That's, what that's, a guy. That's, that's, that's the real tea. Get the some Yorkshire one. tea, bro. Get some Yorkshire tea. Yorkshire tea bags. Yeah, by far the best. Tetley, absolute shite. Um, so it's a bre it's a breakfast tea that generally the, the nation yeah, it's, consumes. It's, it's not an ill grey type of tea. It's a normal type no. of tea, if that makes sense. It, um, I don't, because obviously Yanks don't get real tea like us, do they? They get like this no, like, ill grey shite. Yeah, I mean, um, 
Earl Grey is like dishwater, mate, isn't it? It looks like dishwater. It's yeah, it's well Earl, Earl Grey is Earl Grey is good if you're going for a posh, you know, afternoon tea or you're going for something like that, you know, if it's properly strained, fantastic. Um Yorkshire tea is the way to go. And if you can find it, which you can find online, Yorkshire tea gold. Oh, yeah, that's nice as well. Yeah, yeah, the gold version. Yeah, yeah. They that's are, nice that, well. that's, yeah. The, that's the one. Now we do. I do drink tea. Um, I probably have one cup a night, if possible. But that's kind of a, <laughs> a a drink before I'm going to bed. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's not like a oh, you know, uh, I need it. But you'll be really surprised, uh, Tim. The whole nation as a whole drinks more coffee than it does tea. That's an absolute yeah, fact. Yeah, it's true. I was going to say I, I drink more coffee than tea. Actually, I do too. Um, absolutely same. I actually coffee, drink Jamaica yeah. Blue Mountain coffee, yeah. which is yeah, absolutely beautiful. But it's like fifty quid for flame and. To like 300 grams worth of it, it's crazy. Yeah, I've got, I've got my own espresso machine downstairs, so uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got, me, I've, got me, I've got me on barista shit downstairs, yeah, yeah, all, absolutely. All shit like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we are a co we are um, actually a coffee drinking um nation, you know, it's definitely moved over the years, definitely. 100%. Um, there's, there's a Starbucks everywhere you go, there's Costa yeah, Coffee, Costa, which is an English version of them. Um, What's the other lots, ones? Lots Dunkin' Donuts is around here nowadays. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Most, like, most of the American brands are over here. Um, yeah, so Rod's here saying, so are NFL going to want us to do hard knocks? Now, I think um, Scott G's answered it for us, but yeah, it's, it's a new coach. So basically, in the first year of a new coach, knocks. you can't do hard knocks. It's just a, I, a stipulation I they've you, got for I, give the I think you can a chance. Do in, I think you can do in-season. I don't think you can. I really don't think you can do both. I think okay. I think you are basically safe for the for that first season. I mean, next second season, yeah, for sure. So that could be uh, in, interesting. Mm. But again, yeah, definitely not this year. Yeah, um, uh, Rod. Last question, then Scott G, who's just is still in our chat here. He has said, "Time to get to know our co-hosts and the hosts better." One, what's the one non-football topic that you have a passion for? That either equals or exceeds your passion for the commanders. You can tell that draft fatigue has officially set in. P.S. I expect Scouts to shock the world and draft JJ at two. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happened, Scott. So you to know be fair, I mean? to be fair, Scott, Scott was right. And and, and uh, to be fair, when I was when I was selecting uh, JJ, I was thinking of Scott when I was doing it. I was thinking he's, he's got a nail here, but like obviously not at two. <laughs> um, so what's the so Scouts? What's the one thing that you are uh, Non-football related that you are as passionate about. Ooh, it's a hard question. Though. I mean, obviously, you know the, the usual the usual stuff. You know, family, family, family. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's obvious. Um, also, you know, I'm, I'm I'm big into films or well, movies, as called in the states. Um, what else? Work. You know, as in my career that I have um, as a physio, physiotherapist. Uh, what else, really? Probably about it, really. And yeah, nothing, nothing so, crazy. Right? <laughs> I'm a boring bar yeah, steward, mate. Boring yeah, bar yeah, steward. I'm, I'm, I'm the same. Quite boring, mundane. And um, for me, it's family. Obviously, they they always come first, um, irrespective of what we, we we even do on here. I think I'm most passionate about the commanders as a whole. Hasn't always been there. Um, I've always been a supporter of the commanders throughout the years, but I think it can depend on what other sporting teams I've got that are doing very well. Sometimes I'll pay more attention to one, then I'll pay more attention to others. So for me, I used to play rugby union. Um, I was pretty good at playing rugby union, believe it or not. I don't look like I am, but I was okay. Um, you know, I played at a forces level, so I was play for the RAF, um, play for the combined <laughs> services. I was waiting for this. I was waiting for this. Come on, Karen, you know. <laughs> um, and then... Really, it's it. I, I've got other sporting passions. I'm a bit of a sport mad guy. So yeah, I mean, I mean, we all, we all love sport. Hey, you just said non, yeah. non non football slash sport, you know. And I think um, well, I said I non, mentioned non, football, non, didn't he? Yeah, obviously, English football. soccer is another one for me. I'm a big Liverpool yeah. fan. Um, do you go to games? I'm actually a York City fan as well, which sounds weird, but that's a it's like a non league team, so the yeah. semi professional team. Um, so they're like about the sixth or seventh league in the in England. Um, and I go to watch them quite a lot. One because I love York as in the city, the city is an awesome place. Um, but also that you can get tickets quite easily with Liverpool, it's the bloody nightmare to get tickets. So, <laughs> yeah, so my biggest um outside passion was uh Carlo United Football Club, they're my local side. 
Uh, well, they're not actually my local side. My local side are Barrow AFC, who are our rivals. Um, but they are in Cumbria, about a two and a half hour drive from Barrow. Um, it's the arse end of nowhere. It's the border city with Scotland. Um, it's quite bleak up there. We get an average of about 8,000 people through the gates. Uh, we're currently in League One, which is the third tier of English football. Um, we, we've just been relegated to the fourth tier again, which we were promoted from you last she. year. Um, but as you can, uh, as you can, as you can, um, you can see. Yeah, that's what I like to do. Um, they're putting on here. You love penguins and Janamine. <laughs> Jan Janerman. Yeah, I do. Uh, honestly, my, my daughter has a big passion with um penguins and what likes watching penguins and has lots of stuffed penguin teddies and we we always mess about and do little voices of different penguins i'm actually going to try and start a youtube channel for that so uh, watch out oh, okay. Quite funny. okay um so yeah we do we yeah. have adventures with so, the penguins so yes yeah, so there's a few things there i mean yam's mentioned pop culture and Andy yeah um now again you know i mean i'm not didn't mention it but i am into politics as well um yeah i am too yeah um obviously not as detailed as probably yourself but um <laughs> And the thing is, as well, it's like I don't have, um, like over here, you see, we don't have true freedom of speech, so uh, li like Americans do. Um, so, which you're thinking, oh, it's a bit of a bit of a su dodgy subject there, but it's true. You no, know, a, lot, a lot of the stuff that the government are doing, we don't really know what's going on. Where at least over in the states, you can find it if you can research, you can find it. What's really going out, going on out there? Um, so, I, and so I always follow the American guys. To be fair, because we're not too far behind what what they do as a government is what we do as our government, and we see it the same things. We're very, very aligned in that respect. Um, so I take what they're doing and extrapolate what we're doing, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep that as we're, we're not a politics show. <laughs> we're not a politics show. We keep, we keep quiet on that. But yeah, if you do want to, uh, oh my god, no, I. <laughs> Cheers, love. Yeah, no, I don't. But uh, in all in all seriousness, yeah. collect. We, Rob collects whiskies and does tastings every now and then. That's brilliant. I, I, I I'm, I'm similar. Not, not scotch. I can't. For some reason, I can't stand scotch. But what I, I do like is, um, is different bourbons. Ooh, uh, okay. So my favourite one at the moment is a uh, wild turkey rare breed. Really, really, uh, real smooth. One of my favourites. Nice. Well, there you go. There's a recommendation for everybody. If you can get there. it. Well, and it's American as well. Um, wild turkey is normally an American brand. So yeah, that's that. That just about does a scouse. Anything else from you, mate? Or are you quite comfortable, happy, looking forward to the draft as always? Oh, of course, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's always it's always a good time. It's just a shame that the way it's set out over here, it's you know it's a Thursday night at one in the morning start, and and it's just a nightmare oh. to try and get like a place open that you can have a big party. Yes, of course you go to somebody's house, but if you're going to try to get like. 20 30 40 people you can't you can't fit a bit of that in your house and there's well maybe your house because you're loaded but definitely not my house um uh, but yeah for sure man um and obviously yeah, i think we had, i think um deuce was mentioning before about the um, divisions the hard and knocks. Yeah, yeah. hard knocks and stuff like that yeah but again we'll have to we'll have to wait and see how that one goes the deuce um but yeah my bourbon for the win woohoo <laughs> I like agree to like bourbon. I like bourbon. Well, that just about does us then, mate. So thank you to Band Burroughs, <laughs> Tim Towner, uh, Rob Morrison, <laughs> Steve Lim, Paul Flander, Turner, Deuce, Yam, Scott G, Brian in the chat, Scott G in the chat, Yam in I've, the chat, my wife in the chat. I've only got I've only got chat. one person blocking me because I'm not big enough. That's the problem with me, Deuce. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm not big enough as in a as in a reputation. I've got one one person that blocked me. And you know who it is, don't you? You know who it is, don't you? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we know who that is. Yeah, uh, we're calling BS for short. because <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's actually his uh, his initials. His initials. BS. Yeah, he's, he's a local. He's a local journalist in Washington. Shall we say <laughs> BS, mate? BS, and it's true. After time, he talks. It is BS. So uh, there you go. There you go. Um, I thought we weren't going to get political, but there you go. That's what it is. All right. So that's us. We will see you again um, this time next week. Thank you for being with us. I can only apologize again for the StreamYard nonsense. Basically, I went to do the link yesterday for this pod to link it to YouTube. Uh, and it said, sorry, StreamYard's not working. And I was like, OK. And then it said, sorry, it's not working. So I tried again and again and again. It wasn't doing anything. Reached out to Jesse and John who used StreamYard and said, are you having problems with this? Mm, doesn't look like I am. 
Then the next thing you know, there was 12 different links for this pod. And I, I think can't it was more like 16, them. I think, wasn't it? Was, it? I think it was yeah. some, something yeah, like yeah, that. Crazy so, yes, man. Yam, you were correct when you, you logged on. You were like, there's about 12 different links. <laughs> yeah, I, apo- I, I, apo- I apologize for that. All right, everyone. Thanks very much and take care. And thank you for being with us in the chat. We thanks, appreciate guys. you. Bye. <laughs>